covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo, 99.1 FM. Burbies, 99.5 FM. Kaijur Radio. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Brand new week here in Georgetown. It's a little hot out there. It's October the 12th, 2020. And as we speak right now, Guyana is getting ready to open its airport, well, somewhat in a very restrictive mode. And this would have come months after uh, we closed our airports and our borders for the pandemic uh, to protect ourselves. As we go here today, we have 104 deaths recorded since March and the numbers are climbing, but we've taken the chance to reopen the airport and it's going to be very restrictive in the way that you could travel. You just can't just put, pick up yourself and then jump on the plane and say that you're going to come or you're going to go. Uh, there are going to be restrictions with regards to tests that you're taking and it has to be uh, it has to be controlled and so we're going to talk a little bit that as we speak right now uh, we would have seen more charges being leveled against uh, Chief Elections Officer Kate Lowenfield today he, he was told to turn up at the CID headquarters where he was detained and then taken over to the magistrate court uh, for um, uh, um, uh, public office crimes uh, that he would have been serving in as the chief elections officer. Tomorrow, uh, the chairperson of the People's National Congress reform and former uh, Minister of Health, Waldo Lawrence, is supposed to be turning up at the uh, uh, CID headquarters in Ivalevi there where she is to be questioned and maybe there's going to be charges. Today, a number of persons uh, turned up at the Ivalevi headquarters there and they were saying, you know, they were protesting kind of uh, in front of the Ivalevi there. Uh, so we are going to be bringing you this and other details as we go forward. Many things to talk about uh, today, including uh, the busyness of some minister and, uh, of course, a new editor-in-chief at Kaichur uh, News here. Well, uh, we're not sure. Is that news? Let's talk about that in a little while because a lot of people are calling and uh, it did create some laughter because it just goes to underscore how much of a... Uh, uh, sometimes it could be very gullible. You need to pay attention, read between the lines, see what's happening, somebody poking fun at you. So it is October the 12th, 2020, and uh, this is the Wake Up Gan Show. We're going to wake you up today. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari, and you're tuned in to Kaicho Radio 99.1, uh, where you could get us in Esquibo and Demerara, and 99.5 if you're up in Burbies. I want to say good day to the folks down in Burbies there, wherever you are, whatever it is that you're doing. I want to say good day from the family down at Kaicho Radio, Kaicho News. The biggest radio, the biggest newspaper in this beautiful land of ours. And we bring it to you as it is. Uh, there's no icing on the cake when it comes to presenting the news to the people of Guyana and or wherever you are around the world. So I want to say good day also to the people overseas who will be joining us. You know, it's always a pleasure uh, tuning in, listening to you wherever you are as we uh, discuss things, bring things out to the fore. Uh, discuss issues uh, because that's what the show is all about. Wake up, Guyana. It's about your views. It is about your complaints. It's about what you see, what you think. And uh, we are going to be having two hours of that as we go on to 3 o'clock today to bring you the happenings in Guyana. And you're coming from no other than our studio here uh, uh, on Saffron Street, Charleston. Uh, where everybody, including um, Josh and uh, Raj, uh, here manage the controls here, trying to make sure that things go smoothly as possible. Before we get into uh, the news, let me tell you what are some of the big things that are dominating the headlines today, according to the headlines of the Kite Shore newspaper here. We're going to start with Sunday's newspaper right away. Local content provisions uh, for Payari. This is October 11th. And you can remember this month is October the 10th, 2020. So it's 10 10 2020. It looks like a 10 20 kind of thing happening here in Guyana. So this is October the 11th newspaper, the Sunday's edition. Local content provisions for Payara license flawed petroleum laws. The PPP government has done exactly what Trotman did with the license phase one. This is Christopher Ram. You know, he's been always critical uh, talking about this and other content issues that we would have in Guyana here. So uh, when you read that article, don't miss it. You should uh, get yourself informed, get yourself educated as to what are some of the things that you can do 
uh, you don't have to be on the road to protesting, but you could raise your voice, you could lend your voice into uh, not only letters to the editor, but you could take the social media and, in, and you know, just simply demand that you get a better deal. Kaichur Oil, Black, Oil Block awarded filled with red flags. Award, uh, let me go back that over and over again. Uh, Kaichur Oil, uh, sorry, Kanji Oil Block awarded f award filled with uh, red flags. Despite Guyana gets nothing from the billions of dollars from the oil block, is worth to taxpayers owed 100 million pre-contract costs to owners. And so, you know, uh, we got uh, very little from this oil block, and, but they handed us $100 million right there. You know what's $100 million? You know what tablets I could buy for the people of Guyana? Uh, we, I, for $100,000, I could get about six tablets that could be given to our people. They handed us. We give them almost next to nothing, and they handed us a bill right away. Uh, 100 million dollars. We're not sure what they did. And if you look at the story here, former director Nicholas Chakasang, former director Yuli Nelson, director and sole shareholder Idris Kamal Duki, all players within this Kanji oil block. And uh, there are questions because when you look at the Kanji and the Kaichu block, it's almost uh, what the Stabrook has. So you're talking billions and billions of dollars that we got very little or nothing for. Um, and uh, you look at also at the bottom of the page how Senegal lost the billions of dollars in oil fields, um, in gas fields here rather. Senegal government was aware of the obvious corrupt, uh, corruption red flags but chose to ignore them. Export says uh, man confesses to rape and murder. Venezuelan cook admits to also raping and kill. So we have a serial rapist murderer here uh, that was caught. And uh, he was working. He murdered a woman down in Bartica or from Bartica there. She disappeared. They found her floating in a mining pit. Then uh, months later, he was working at another camp, killed the cook, uh, and he's alleged uh, or he's been accused of raping her as well. Raping, strangling, beating. Um, and uh, her body was discovered. So he was arrested. He did admit to these crimes, uh, to, uh, to that one there, and then to this other one from Bartico, which was a couple months old, he disappeared. He did admit because uh, both cases had a lot of similarities, and so he was questioned, and he did admit uh, with regards to that. So we go to the Kaichu newspaper of today, October 12, 2020. Minister Darmlal halts process to hire a company founded by its son. This was a case in which uh, 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 it came out that there was a contract that was being awarded. Think about $80,000. I don't understand this at all. Um, for the printing of some photographs, ministerial photographs. And it went to a company that was said to be linked to his son. But the minister came out with a, a, a statement very quickly yesterday and says it was a very wicked article. Um, that came that emanated from a uh, opposition member of parliament, Ganesh Mahi Paul. They are looking at um, uh, uh, to see how there's some legal recourse. But the minister says that he halted the transaction. And in any case, uh, there was another story that came out then. The, the, the permanent secretary would have been sent home uh, on Friday, Emil McGarrell. He was a former minister of housing permanent secretary leading up to 2015, went over to the Ministry of Communities. Uh, the Ministry of Communities under the coalition would have also been dealing with housing. So he has now been let loose. Was there a connection? We don't know. There seems to be a suggestion there that the leaking of this document. In any case, the minister says his son has nothing to do with that company there, uh, meaning in terms of that he's not an official within the company. He's not a director. He's not anything um, uh, with regards to a decision maker. Um, Kanji block owner sold shares six weeks after, after receiving blocks. And this was a uh, story that you see in Senegal, quick buying and selling of offshore con concessions, a major red flag, should be uh, uh, a wake-up call for all nations. So we're paying attention to some parallel transactions again and then abroad with regards to oil blocks and how uh, the stories abroad uh, could be mirrored or it's mirroring what is happening in Guyana. And we warning, I think the newspaper here is warning based on the exports, be very careful as to how you go about it. It's not too late. You still have it within control. Let's put down, let's it, let the authorities pay attention. That's what the newspaper is saying here. And the headlines are reflecting that notorious wanted man shot after found hiding on the bed. And this was a man uh, called him Boxton, and he was part of the Boxton gang. 
and they found them in the all boys song area. They is wanted for a set of crimes, including robberies and so on. Police received information and they went and found them under the bed and they arrested him. And while he was being arrested, being taken into custody, tried to grab a, a, a policeman's gun and um, he was shot and he was arrested. Uh, he went to the police station. He's lucky. Applications pouring in for the telecom sector, and this is coming from Vice President by Jack Deal. And it's no uh, surprise here uh, if you understand that there are many, it's a very lucrative uh, sector. It was a sector that was largely um, abandoned or uh, very little attention. Scant regard was paid to new technology be being developed or the level of service being lifted by. Uh, the big company that is here, our U.S. owned again a telephone and telegraph company, GTT. So some other companies now, including eNetworks and Digicel, which has uh, the which has a competition right now to GTT in the mobile market. Uh, they've already made it very clear that they are going to compete uh, uh, very heavily in the telecom sector. Uh, you would see Digicel wants to get into the landline, but definitely they're landing a subsea cable here, which brings fast internet. So again, it's really good, looking good with regards to competition as to where the prices will go down and how far it will go down. Let us see, but it's, it's in the beginning it's going to take. It is not something that's going to happen overnight, but I'm glad that we are in a process in which these things are moving forward. I was all over, it was on Burbies this weekend. I came down back and it's busyness all over the place. The, the president, and we're gonna talk a little about that in a very short while, did talk about how President Fernandi has his people going at it and he too is leading. I'm gonna tell you what he did up in Burbies and it's good because we want to see our government not sitting on their hands, but getting the work done right in the end here because there are many things to, 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 to do uh, people are calling, people are asking, and uh, we're going to talk about the $25,000 in a very short while, what is happening with that, because we have to pay attention. People want to know. Uh, so while we talk about the telecom sector, model 26 dies after bike smashes into quarantine steel ray. This is, uh, I think it's um, Sewell on the quarantine course. Apparently she left home. Um, she was about to get married or something in a couple of months, so to her go-to boyfriend in Trinidad or fiancé. And uh, she went on a bike ride, and uh, this bike lost control, and uh, they ran into a steel rail, and she wrapped. Uh, she was badly damaged. She died on spot. the The person riding the bike uh, got some damage to uh, some injuries, ended up in the hospital. And while we're talking about that, we've seen many accidents on the road. Motorcycle. There seems to be an increase in the motorcycle. You guys be very careful out there. It's very easy when you ride a motorcycle. Very little protection if you get hit or you fall on the road. You have to wear your helmet. But then what makes it worse? If you speed in, if you speed in, then you're going to find it very difficult to control. Uh, you're going to fall, and the injuries from that fall is what gives you the, the thing. If you're going to be hit into something, it's going to make it even worse yet. So we did see some well-known gentleman there, I think some feet cow or something, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, would have uh, fallen from his bike in a diamond hospital. Very well-known man around the place. He died yesterday, tragic again, and then up the East Coast you would have seen a car and a motorcycle smash up there that left two people in the hospital. They died also. So I'm not sure what is happening in our roadways. You guys got to be very careful. Too much of madness is happening. Undertaking, overtaking, switching lanes at will. We got to be very careful. You guys are not serious. You guys don't want to do it. And the minibuses you need to get yourself uh, in order. You need to get your act together. You're doing madness on the road. And uh, you're not protecting yourself for what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing uh, with regards to protecting ourselves, uh, the minibus people, the passengers and everybody, you have to demand that you protect yourself, uh, uh, that uh, they do what is necessary, that the drivers and so, and the conductor, that you demand, you're in control, not them. When you see them doing anything, take out your video, start videoing them, start doing things to protect yourself. Don't be stupid, don't be dead, be alive. And so allow, don't allow the tail to wag the dog. You have to wag, wag the tail, not the tail wagging the dog. So more charges to Lowenfield today with regards to his role, his alleged role in the, um, uh, the attempt to rig the election, the attempt to, uh, uh, to change the course of the election results. Um, companies now, uh, we will talk about the telecoms company. More companies are vying. They've been a slew of applications according to Vice President by Jack Deal. Um, um, we're talking about, um, in a very short while, we are going to be talking to the Ethnic Relations Commission 
Um, uh, so I'm going to ask Raj also uh, to to one second. Uh, my apologies there, just talking to Raj. Sometimes Raj interrupts me halfway through and tells me to do this, do that. Are you the boss, Raj? You the boss? He's not a boss. You've got to be the boss. You've got to learn to be the boss sometimes. So in a very short while, we're going to be talking to the Ethnic Relations Commission official there. They're going to be talking because they have stepped it. They have stepped it up in, uh, uh, with regards to bringing awareness to what we have. There's, you know, there's a big issue going on right now uh, with uh, ethnic relations in Guyana. And so they're trying to do step it up to do a little more awareness and we're going to be talking to them what it is that they're doing in a very short while we're going to be talking to the public relations officer Shiv Nanlal so in a very short while we are going to be linking up to him today we're talking about the opening of the airport um, uh, uh, so let's see what happens here what is it exactly that you need to do the Barbies bridge well let's talk a little about that um, uh, there is going to be a bridge across the Quarantine River, which is going to link Guyana. So in essence, what you're going to see, what you're going to be seeing here in a very short while is, um, uh, is a bridge that's already across linking Guyana to Brazil. That's a Takatu Bridge. What you're going to see here, is it is a plan, and it, l it looks as if we're moving very rapidly in that direction. It is the plan to put a bridge across the Quarantine River, which is going to link Suriname to Guyana. And you know, there's been a the talks for a little while. We already have a, a ferry that was running there. The pandemic has put a halt to that operation because we need to protect our borders. Nothing going, nothing coming. But it is the plan to put a bridge uh, across the Quarantine River to link Suriname. They would have located a number of areas, one area in fact, they planted some flags of the two countries. In a very short while, within a matter of weeks, Guyana is gonna go uh, to Suriname. And uh, this is our government is gonna go there, representatives, officials, and they're gonna be signing that agreement which is gonna pave the way for a bridge across the Quarantine River. So that's big news because you know, every time that uh, you have transportation linkages, meaning if you have new road net networks, bridges and so on, it improves access to places uh, which were not. Uh, before time, if you, you're looking to cross into Brazil before the pandemic, it was as easy as one, two, three. You just have a passport ready and there's some fees and things like that. And you just get across there very quickly, over to Brazil, come back, and there's a, a free zone area in Letem. So you can bring yourself and you can be able to sell it. And so, and there were thousands of people, Brazilians, coming across and shop in Letem until this pandemic has hit. Uh, so uh, it is going to open this country. I'm excited about this bridge across the Quarantine River here. Um, and so in a very short while, uh, we are going to be uh, talking to you about uh, uh, the um, it's Mayor Yubraj Narine's birthday today. I want to say a happy birthday to you, Mayor Yubraj Narine. Uh, wherever you are, I hope that you are enjoying it. And uh, this morning, we understand that the Karen Van Slykman, and she is the former PS of the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Commerce and Tourism, I think it's also there. And she went there. She was one of them that removed. She turned up there to collect her belongings, she says, and she found that the locks changed. Um, I'm not sure why she didn't collect it over the weekend or so, but she turned up there and the police had to be there. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, this morning, I think also, I woke up to the news <laughs> that uh, uh, there were some pranks that were coming from my, my co-workers at Kaicho News here. And guess what they did? Uh, we have some very wicked people. Glenn is a wicked man. He does a lot of things. He does a lot of pranks on the staff. His face is as straight as anything. And he, you know, he does things. You would not believe what that man does to his staffers. In any case, um, the staffer decided to do something to the Kayan Gaines critic. He came here, took a picture, put it on Facebook, and then the staffers decide that they're gonna put it up there that he's a new editor in chief. Well, he's not. I must tell you that he remains a very good friend, dear friend of Leonard Gildari and of Kaicho newspaper and the radio, but he has his own thing going. So he's not the editor-in-chief, uh, the, the, the boss at the moment is Glenn Dahl. It's a number of editors and that's about it. At the end of the day, the, so it was a good laugh uh, the entire morning. Everybody called and said, Gildari, uh, the critic, uh, Michael Rodriguez, is, is your editor-in-chief and you know, they wanted to know. I'm not sure whether you guys were worried or whether you were clapping your hands, whatever it is, but it was a big laugh, and I enjoy myself. I always like a good laugh. What about you? Uh, so it is October the 12th. In a very short while, uh, we are um, 
somebody's asking why is this Suriname border closed? Well, the border is closed because we have a pandemic right now in the air. You can't have it open. Uh, and we have had it closed since March. Since March month, it was one of the decisions taken by the then government, the coalition government, to restrict the, uh, the people that are coming into this country or leaving. And you don't want to have a situation where you can't have control. It's many countries would have taken those, um, uh, many persons would have taken those decisions, uh, many countries uh, to close the borders, close the airports. We have started the process of reopening our airports, and let's have a quick discussion on that. So what is happening? If you're going to come into the country, you need to contact your um, uh your operator, the flights operators, whether it's Caribbean Airlines or whoever it is. I understand Caribbean Airlines have let loose a quite a number of its staffers because it was hard hit by the, uh, the pandemic. Maybe it's going to start uh, rehiring them. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect their flights. But Guyana is one of the most lucrative destinations and operating points for the Caribbean Airlines, which is a Trinidad-based uh, airline. And it has been providing services to Canada, to uh, New York, I understand it goes uh, to Miami as well. Uh, but what it is, uh, Caribbean Airlines is one of the big airlines that's been flying, has been around for a very long time. Uh, so we are going to be uh, we are going to be bringing you updates as we get it. So if you're going to come into the country, are you going to be leaving your? I think you uh, the countries that you're coming from, uh, or again is going to be requiring that you do those tests. We don't want you coming in here. Uh, just like that, you are going to be required to, to, to do those tests. So commercial flights are going to be allowed, but it's going to be very restrictive. You have to take those tests, and when you come here, you might be very well uh, be obliged to test the pre pre temperature and whatever else it is that they may be doing some rapid testing to you if they believe that you could be su uh, suspected. And if you come here too, you will likely be required to uh, you know stay at home, be isolated, uh, be restricted. Uh, for about a week or so. So it's all part of the reopening. So it is commercial flights being introduced back again. Let us see how that goes uh, as we go forward with this country. So before, at 2 o'clock, we're going to be joined with the Ethnic Relations Commission. I want to say good day to the people right across this beautiful land of ours. It's a better value for better protection. Get your ship and cargo cover with us today. CARICOM General Insurance Company in Cut 121 Regenton, Narnock Street. To better serve you, you can now purchase your insurance online from the comfort of your home. Telephone 225-1787 or 2690020, CARICOM General Insurance Company, Inc. Raj, it has been a very long weekend. What did you do for this weekend? Did you do anything? Did you cook? Yes. You cook what? Biryani? Yes. Chicken? No, vegetarian and chicken. Okay, okay. He said something. I'm not sure. Ve vegetarian biryani? Yes. Is there vegetarian biryani? Yes. Very good. He did that. So, so did you eat it or did you give somebody else? Did you? Yeah, I it's spicy. It's very spicy. spicy. You, you would have to make something with probably lamb or mutton or something, and we're going to ask you to bring some of that. Uh, maybe you could try it. And, of course, we're going to tell the people whether your hand is good. In Ghana, you say if your hand tastes good, it doesn't mean that you're actually licking your hands or something. It means that you've cooked well. We have some strange things in Ghana going on. Uh, in India, do you dab the bottom house? Do you know what's that? Okay, you take like cow dung and you mix it with water and things like that and dirt in some places and you get a mixture and you, you could, instead of you having, back in those days, not a lot of people would have concrete, but under your house, mm -hmm. it's mud. So you put it there, it's like a, a covering and it gets cracked after a little while, so you have to do it ever so often you do it. Uh, so we have that thing here and we have our fireside. I'm not sure what you have over there, but the best food comes from the fireside, the best food. When grandmother cooked the food, or your mother or anybody cooked the food on the fireside, it is the best thing. It tastes really, really good. There's a different flavor because of the smoke and because of the wood and everything. It does. It's it's the best. If you take a chicken curry from a fireside, it is the best thing. Uh, the country food. So there's a couple of things that you should know. But while I think in India also you have two thousand different uh, ways that you could cook, cook dal. So it's, it's a, I hope that you guys are, are, are remembering the good old days, the older folks uh, that is uh, who would have been joining us. So we are going to be uh, going to the lines within a few minutes. Two two six seven five is seven five three four, or seven four five three. 
Yes, yeah, 7453. I'm not sure how I got that wrong. 2267453. 2267453. And you are tuned into the Wake Up Gayana show here on Kaicho Radio. Let's have some fun today. We want to hear what's bothering you. In the meantime, Region 7, sorry, it's Region 8, Region 9, Region 1. Those are the three regions that have started to collect uh, those $25,000 uh, vouch, sorry, cash. Uh, grants that the government has been given. It's going to every household. So if three or four household is in one building, well, you are going to each one get, but you'd have to prove, of course, that you come from different family. You don't want to see a 17-year-old boy turn up or a 17-year-old girl and says, well, unless you get a baby in her hands. Well, I have my own family. I'm living with my mom. So, they, you know, you got to be very careful. You don't want any other person to be coming in and be collecting. There is going to be some restriction. That's understandable. So let's don't have it, you know, quarrel. They, they have to, you don't want this money to be stolen. Uh, we are going to be looking very carefully as to what are the procedures in the hinterlands. It's region one, uh, region, uh, uh, region nine, which is uh, two bordering areas. And of course you have region eight. The process would have started. I did see a story as they were 127 persons or 27 families benefited in the Region 8 area. Over the weekend on Saturday, there was busy uh, time in the Burbis area for the police. That was because President Irfan Ali was in the Burbis area. He would have visited a number of areas, made some on-spot uh, announcements about the uh, play fields that he's going to upgrade, but he did meet with the uh, people in Portmore, Ontario. I understand he was in the Skeldon area. In the meantime, there was a ministerial team that uh, would have led the Indian High Commissioner uh, to Guyana uh, on a tour uh, on a number of estates. So that's the performing ones and the ones that have been closed that are now being reopened. And uh, they, uh, we, Guyana is looking for India's expertise. They have a lot of technical persons that could probably come here and lend us some expertise in terms of running, managing, maybe um, giving us uh, those expertise to what could we do uh, in a very short space of time to bring those estates up and uh, running back again or maybe find some uh, strategic investors. So there's a number of things that they're playing with. One of the things that the government, uh, I seem to get the impression, uh, is that the government don't want to hold on to this, this industry too long. Um, that is going to be a draw or it's going to be a pain uh, for the Treasury. They want to see that it's being put uh, under good management for a long time. Away. In the meantime, Irfan Ali, as a president, would have come down from there. He's busy. He's sending his people all over the place, the ministers. I don't think they've been given a lot of time to do whatever it is that they've been doing. Uh, you know, relax a little. Uh, they've been hitting the road. And it's long hours, 16, 18 hours a day, I think, according to some of the ministers that have been working. And these are the kind of things that I like to see. Of course, they're going to take, it, take some breaks once in a while because it's human being that you deal with. But uh, the people have plenty of expectations. I think uh, the president would have gone to Esquibo yesterday and Saudi and other areas. He went on a, a trip. He went on a visits to uh, Wakenham and Leg One as well, I understand. And he would have been talking to the people. He says, give us a chance. We've now come in. We, we have already started... Uh, started delivering our promises in our manifesto and we want you to give us a chance so we can be able to continue our work we've given you within that emergency budget measures a lot of the stuff that we suppose it's not uh, where we want to be but it is a start so just give us a chance allow us to do what we have to do we're working very hard we've started talking about the Demerara Harbor Bridge which we have already highlighted the place we've started talking about the Quarantine River Bridge uh, we come in next year we give you some cash grants so he's basically making his case within the first two months just over two months now since he would have gone into office has he been doing a good job we'd like to hear from you what has the president been doing has his team been doing a good job uh, so we have to assess them you know we have to be very critical as a people, give credit where credit is due, and of course, criticisms, uh, if they have to be criticized, you have to do that as well. I think uh, I think they've done fairly. Of course, we can never be too uh, happy as to uh, everything that they have been doing in Guyana, so let us, uh, let us be very careful. And so we head to the lines, 2267453, do we have a call on line already? Yes, good afternoon, caller, you're on the air, go right ahead. Hello? Yes, good afternoon, caller, you're, you're on the air. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, hello? Yes, you are the ear. Go right ahead. Yes, Mr. Gidari. I'm calling from Esquibble. Con I mean, George, you're right about me, but I'm calling concerning a problem in Esquibble. 
Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Tell me what it is. Well, right about now, we have a problem with this person. They have a chicken pen in front of... A what? Next street. A chicken pen. Yes. And this pen, they build it from fence to fence, they build it. And it's ha- smelling up the whole people that live at the back. All right. Which area is this? Bushlot. Bushlot. In Essex Coast. Is there an NDC in that area there? Well, the people at the back, we went to the NDC, we went to the health. The people have helped and stuff, but still no resolution. All right, this is what you need to do. You need to write a letter to the NDC, copy it to the RDC chairman, and send a copy of it. You have to do that. That's the only way you start doing it. Send a copy of it to the Minister of Local Government, Nigel Damlal. Okay then, thank you. So you do that. You send a letter. This is how you need to start. You take pictures. If you could take some pictures, maybe print it out. So they well, could be able to. The people at the back, we already did that, but it seems that nothing is happening. The no, no, because the NDC got to be a little more thing. The NDCs are not uh, don't understand the powers that they have. They need to start putting on the foot. All right. All right then. Thank so you. So you do that, and you keep me posted how that makes out. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear. So that's of course I want to say good day to you wherever you are, whether you're in the kitchen garden, whether you're in the kitchen. Whether you're in the bedroom, whether you're in the hammock rock, and whether you're cooking to all the housewives, to all the house husbands, to all the drivers, I want to say good day. If you're a carpenter and you're doing your stuff, you know, take care, wear your mask. You can't stop protecting yourself. We would have seen uh, the, the number of persons uh, who are being affected right now by COVID-19 and the, the, the ages, uh, it's not, you could be as uh, young as 28, you could be as young as 26, you could be as young as 40. I'm going to say young. These are young age. These are people that are, are still have the whole life and the, the, the deaths are attacking them. It means that people have underlying conditions and you have to protect yourself. Do not take it for granted. Uh, so I want to, uh, you also to send the text, uh, the text rather, uh, to 62222, I want to see those texts, what's bothering you, tell us about your government, what have they been doing for, to, uh, doing for you, have they been visiting you, what, are, what is your NDC doing for you, what is the RDC doing for you, are you happy with your mayor's performance, are you happy with what is happening in your community. Tell us a little about the school, what is happening with the children there. So before we go to those texts uh, that I know that have been coming in, uh, a lot of them, every single day, uh, there are scores and scores of text messages that uh, people have been sending in to us. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we are going to read them as we go along. In a very short while, we are going to be joining uh, Shiv Nanlal from the Ethnic Relations Commission and he's going to be telling us a little about a, a logo competition. Why is that a, important, a logo competition on this program here? Because we're questioning the Ethnic Relations Commission about what it's doing about the complaints that we have uh, something of an ethnic problem going on here. You know, we need to do something to bring our people together, to bring our people, you know, not have a divide. And so uh, the Ethnic Relations Commission, they're warming up to the, the to their job right now, meaning they're taking it to the next, next level because we have been calling them, we've been criticizing them about uh, not doing enough. Uh, so let's hear what they're doing, really. They have a big task. They're the regulators uh, making sure that uh, you know those racists that are living in this country here that uh, we should charge them we should sanction them whenever they start acting up here do not call us on six triple two triple two do not call us on that just send the messages on that so we hear two two six seven seven four five three we want to hear you uh, do we have another call here yes good afternoon call you on the air go right ahead all right yes good sir. afternoon mr Gidari. good afternoon sir so uh, i i was very annoyed when um, people were talking about the sergeant, the female sergeant, and more. Yes, sir. But when I look at it, the sergeant is affiliated with his own people and fighting down the Indian people. Now, this is Mr. Anil Prasad again? Huh? This is Mr. Anil Prasad? Anil Prasad? No, this no, is Anil. No, no, this oh. is somebody else. Okay. This is somebody else. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, I've called in here to the other station concerning a foul fight game. Mm. You know they got a game, game cock fight. Yes. Anything about 100 person went there. I call it the station because every week Sunday, if there's got a big fight or anything there. Uh-huh. And so this woman is not doing anything because of her affiliation. Uh-huh. 
these people, them, when they're fighting, they're fighting because of a gambling. It's a gambling game. Yes. I'm sorry if you see the amount of tears. They're asking for the direction to show them. Did you take any pictures? You all take any pictures? No, I didn't take no pictures. Sir. Next time you all start taking these pictures and let me see what's happening and send it to us. You got to figure but, out a way of getting it to us so we could send it to the people. Yes, but sir, when people are saying that Louis Field being charged for misconduct, the police are supposed to be in charge for that too. Not only yes. one body must R go Right, but, but, but here, how are you doing it? You see, I could say that uh, Raj is a thief. But I need to provide some documents and I need to make a complaint to somebody for them to start acting on it. Yeah, Be because you, we got to be careful. While the police has the thing, remember the police got to do And remember, right about now, the police are so badly on the staff. If I'm, I'm ashamed to tell you that some of the stations barely got a vehicle that's working. It's that's really, good. really sad. It's really sad. But I understand what you're saying there. But I want you, did you talk to the commander? No. The commander, when you call them, they don't answer the phone. I have a problem from last year. December the 3rd. Uh, who was there? Who was there at that time? And I came home and my meet my house break down, uh -huh. break up, and my house burned. Oh my. I went and I see what all my clothes, money, everything. Because uh -huh. I'm alone lonely. Up to now I didn't get any satisfaction. The, 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 um, the CID sergeant, uh -huh. the, car, the commander put me on to him. When he put me on to that man, that man tell me if he can give $50,000 to handle the matter. Mr. Henry, I'm calling him. Oh, oh, oh. Now, they said and send my paper to the DPP. to come back and the girl call me for some more information. He had a CID officer who was in the, in the room where the girl was speaking to me. Our name, his name was Mr. Mendonza. Uh -huh. He asked the girl, like, this man a hustler. Uh -huh. You're telling me no, I've taken some information from me. He said, oh, this man only speculating, speculating. Get him out of the place. At, in the station. So all these things that happened. And that, that, that sergeant at what they had and more, I was sorry for her when people think about it. She affiliates because these are Negro people who are doing this game. And they know they're not far. It's not some way far that you got to go far. It's and more not and then more. Who the I'm going to raise this thing back again. I think if there's a case where, where it is, need, um, uh, she this. She needs to uh -huh. be disciplined. She needs to be got to court. Not only law and field misconduct, she is misconducting too. All right, sir. Got you very clear. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you very much, my brother. Uh, good day. So I want to say good day to the folks down in the end more there. Um, and, 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 and I see the, again uh, there's uh, some complaints about this thing. What I could tell you is that we have confirmation that the police complaints to the authority um, uh, would have been uh, uh, reviewing the case uh, made by the complaint by the people of Edmore. And I'd have to find out from them where that case is. I'm going to call the um, uh, Justice Retired William Ramlal and let us talk about that in a little while. He did invite me over. I'm on vacation, but I'd have to find some time and go uh, talk to him. Somebody here, Joy Seach, all the way from Florida. We watch him from Florida. The critic had an interview with Dr. Jack Dewey, where he pointed out that the criminal, uh, where he pointed out the criminal politics propagated by the opposition should cover this matter a little more. It's not the norm in any civil society to have citizens blocking the road in the presence of the law enforcement. I thank you very much for that. Very good point. And uh, the issue that we have here is that uh, while there's a right to protest, do you have a right to, to disrupt the lives and disrupt the businesses of uh, people across this land? Uh, so we, uh, we are going to continue to uh, talk about that. We are going to raise these issues here. Um, uh, this is not something that's over with. I, I have some very serious issue. I went up to Barbies over the weekend and uh, was a little nervous in that West uh, Barbies area. And let me tell you this, something has really, really shocked me. Um, I mean, you knew about it. But I must tell you that when I came over the Barbies, I was very, very alert, driving. And in some parts, there was about three or four police vehicles. I'm talking about a truck with a heavily armed joint services, uh, ranks with heavy guns and everything. This is not something as a, as, as a citizen of this country that I like to see. That is a police presence or their, their military presence in, in our communities. 
the military should not be there, but we're asking for it. And then when we, you see that, you remember the boxing times and when there was a permanent uh, outpost in the boxing community area there, and that went south because there was even accusation that the Joint Services folks were in league with some of those criminals that were there. And even now, you see boxing has changed for a little better. The people are not going to tolerate. Many of them have start pushing away the criminals who would have used there. So the criminals have moved there. They're moving between Agricola and Cainville. And there are many decent people there who are not going to tolerate it. Um, but it is where, what it is. But I would come back to the West Bobbies area there. I was, I was grieved. It, it saddened my heart so much to see the military presence there. And you see uh, many parts of the road was badly damaged. It was, um, they were crazy in some part of the world you have to ease down and you could see when 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 you pass in there the people are sitting there at the side of the road looking at all the vehicles and there's a sense that it was on ease in that area there I was a little um, saddened to see that in the West Bobbies area area that I always believe is so scenic um, uh, it had a, it has a lot of good homes clean homes uh, people are farmers and when you see that happen in the air People are going to look at it suspiciously and want to drive past and say, you know, just breeze and pass. You're looking at the scenery and enjoying it if you're headed to Barbies or you're coming from Barbies. And so these are not things uh, that I felt very happy about. I wasn't happy with the damage to our road because people were born in it. There were several. I counted at least 10 different places that they may have held. Uh, um, they would have had uh, structures that were blocking the road because you could see uh, the debris at the side of the road. You could see the road being burnt in those areas. You could see some craters there maybe where the road was damaged. And we are destroying our roads. And, and yes, I understand what this persons would have been saying here. Um, uh, with regards to the police and so on, uh, the police got to do a little more than that because they know that they are under stress at the moment. We see many police ranks are on the road and they are very... They're, they're clocking people, they're standing up, they're stopping vehicles um, all over the place and so on. And when you go to the police station, when you call them on a crime scene or you call them, they come, one man says uh, there was an attempt to robbery at this place in West Bobbies or somewhere there. And the police took about nine to ten hours before they could have come. So, you know, the people are legit, legitimate uh, rights. Uh, they have concerns, legitimate concerns, in which people are complaining about uh, some of these things that they would have raised uh, from time to time with the police authority. And I think it's it's a culture that we've got to change. It's a culture in our people, not only in the police force, but uh, maybe in the public service in which people take it for granted. Let me give him or let me give her the kind of service that, uh, you know, we've been accustomed to. As soon as 11 o'clock, so we lock up our place and whoever they're there, uh, they can come back this afternoon. And so, you know, that level of service in which we keep, we treat the customer, we treat the people of Guyana with respect, uh, with some kind of care, with some kind of dignity. It is not there anymore. It wasn't there for a very long time. And we have allowed ourselves in terms of the service that we provided. Uh, we provide to the people of Guyana. It has fallen to, to levels when you go overseas and you see what is happening there. You, it saddens you to see that, you know, we could ask ourselves. Things have improved. I must say that the passport office, things are there dramatically improved from the days when, when people would have been lining up very early morning. It's faster now. You could actually go in now and say you want an emergency passport. You could pay $100, $100 US dollars, and you can get it within 24 hours. So these are things that you are moving, uh, that have seen us, uh, um, that is moving the folks are saying that uh, they're not seeing the, the Wake Up Guyana show on YouTube. Uh, Wake Up Guyana show on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to check that out now, caller, uh, listener. Um, it is um, uh, Kaichor Radio live stream on YouTube, but we're going to check that up uh, right now. Uh, Rad says it's shaking his head, so I think it's, uh, he's the culprit being it. If not, I, 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 Rad, you would forgive me for blaming you. So we go to 226-7453. We have another call online here. Good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Yes, call it. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, is this, sir. Is this Kaicho? Yes, it is. You're on the Kaicho radio. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildari. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad I get through to this program. This What's program bothering is, you today? It's a very, 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 I was listening to this program for years now, and it's very, very interesting. No, it's not years. It's since yes. March we started, but, uh, but go so right ahead. I was sorry when I heard yeah. that you were sick and so forth. Yes. Yes, but I'm glad... Wish you all the best to recovery. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just calling. I'm calling from Mesamezog. Mesamezog, yes. Yes, east. Mm-hmm. And the, the NDC, a very long time now, they haven't came and do any kind of work. At I'm living just by the masjid, right? Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And it have a four-foot drain, man. It's got some um, commodity and thing there inside it. You know, we even missing one, one animals and thing right there. And I spoke to a guy from the NDC a very long time now, but let me say about two months ago. Uh-huh. And he told me that he would have sent somebody to cut the vegetation from the, you know, from the four foot at the head. That's where the, the drain uh, is drained. And until now, we haven't seen anybody. You well, know? you know what you got to do? Let me tell you right away what I've been telling everybody, and it works, it works for me. I am very relentless when it comes to doing things. I pick up my phone and some days, like I call a man over the weekend very quickly and the man says, oh God, we can't me for I hope it's not something bad. I said, no, I call you to beg you for some money or to, to beg you for something because I got to help a couple of people. He said, oh God, he took a sigh of relief. But what you got to do when you want things done, you got to be relentless on people. Oh, like, like I did advise somebody this morning, they had a complaint about the chicken pen right next door. Fence to fence, they build it up. I don't understand you put a chicken pen fence to fence in the yard yeah. and the people living next door. You know, but flies and the smell and everything. Why do I have to be right. you know, subjected to that? So here is what I'm going to say to you. You need to write your NDC. You need to copy a letter to the chairman yeah. of the NDC. Copy a letter to the overseer. Copy a letter to the RDC chairman. And of course... You copy a letter, a copy of that, and send mm-hmm. it to the Minister of Local Government, Niger Dabla. But Dabla. you know something, Mr. Gildari, uh-huh. um, a, f- a, f- a few, let me say, about, yeah, about two, this two months ago, I did call the, uh, the regional, regional office, and I spoke to one of the secretary, and she told me that she would have passed on the message. Don't pass on the no message. Know? You need to document it black and white, black and white, send it to them. That's the only way. So you could come back to them. I did send you five letters. Yeah, yeah, and so you need to do that. And every time you see them, when are you going to come? When you got to do that, you got to keep it after a little while. You're going to be pestering someone, they don't want to see you. Yeah. So when you do that, I mean, you have to write, you got to understand your writing, yeah, or you, know? you yeah. have a right to a clean neighborhood right. because you're paying your taxes and things like that. That, that might not correct. be the thing. That is so correct, sir. when that you is understand, correct. Uh-huh. when you understand your rights you're going to be so much empowered. So that's all I'm saying to you. Yeah. Start documenting, put in black and white, so they could never say that Gildari did not complain. I'm complaining to you yeah. officially, and I'm complaining to the minister. The minute that you see that the minister has been complained to, you'll see how fast somebody is going to get up out of the yeah, thing. Yeah. And when you one start calling thing, names... Gildari, one more thing. Sure. Um, we're having a, a one light by Tala Dam, mm-hmm. and it looks like the, one of the, the wires, actually, it, maybe it gets slack. Mm. That is, it only has to look after. And it, it's very dark during the night. It's only that one light to come in, you know, that main access to get at the back in the scheme. And it's very dangerous because we see some, you know, cars coming in and parked during the night and different things like that. The dogs will be barking, you know. Right, 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 right. Uh-huh. Um, what could I tell you? You could have, if the NDC can't do it, because I don't think they have an electrician there. Mm-hmm. Talk to the um, GPL guys. Just give them a little raise and let them buy yeah, that, or something. That's what, that what I was doing. I was looking out for the, ND, uh, the GPL guys. Yeah, the boys do it, man. You know, I ain't seen uh-huh. nobody passing, I'm not saying for you, you know. to give them a, 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 a raise. Because yeah, what they do is, boss, could you do yeah. that for me? And they do five minutes. They take five minutes work. That's right. And if you want to buy a drink for them as well, it's not bribe. It's not bribe. <laughs> I understand. Okay, I understand. so I won't tell you to bribe. There's not a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, so, thank, thank you very you much, very sir. Thank you very much, sir. And you have a nice day. Continue this very interested program and helpful in this country. God bless you, my I brother. Take care. Thank you very much. Uh, so, today, let us see what the folks are saying today. Uh, good morning. Um, uh, let us talk about that Facebook post. Let me see. This is, this is, this came 1120. Um, All right, let me see what this person is talking I have, I am obligated this morning to send this. Good morning. Let's talk about a Facebook, po- uh, Facebook post. Where they say the small private party running for the president, why do they have to pick a side? They're supposed to be independent. That's why all of the small price party, them all of them become PPP now. 
okay, that's how Guyana rules. That's why uh, the new Guyana and all those other small uh, Fries Party and PPP supporters now because they have to choose a side. Um, I'm not sure. We as Indian, we need to stand up now and see what is right and what is wrong. And when we have to go and stand up and let our voices be heard, to stop prosecuting the black people is not fair. Anthony Snow said that not because we are Indian, we have to approve all the wrong things. That the Indian does know, we don't have to let them know that where they're doing wrong. This is exactly what I'm doing now with you. Everything I say to you, it's all black and white. I want to agree with you. And that's why in a very short while, I am going to talk to the, N, uh, to the ERC. I did ask them to come on this program here. Uh, they never took up the opportunity uh, to, to come on, and they are the regulators. If I'm the regulator, I would want to share my knowledge all across this land, especially if I have a free forum, a free program that allows me to uh, educate the people, to make people aware. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I can understand what people are saying. It's all black and white that we see in things. And I, 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 I want to say thank you very much here. I don't so agree. Let us ease this thing about the Indians and blacks. And what I want to say, let's stop this madness of having idiots. And I use that word very, very loosely there. Having our idiots out there divide us. When you see them, you start telling them, not in this house, not in front of my face. You move from here or you remove yourself from the scene. Do not allow yourself to do that. Good afternoon. Uh, Leonard, I would like to say I love your show. I listen to it often. However, I have a question for you. I'm curious to you know why is it that uh, Patterson Turkine, it's got to be patents, not Patterson Turkine. Greater Georgia has been forgotten. This area has been in existence for over 25 years, and it seems that it's only during election that the area gets recognized. But once the president is elected, this area is forgotten again. This area needs street lights, proper road, cross street, etc. This area has a lot of elderly people that get flood, flood a lot. Uh, when it rains. I agree. I think I know that area. It's a Torque and Pattinson, Pattinson area. This right not too far from the where uh, the Gifland Mall is and exo to the movie tongue. So I did raise that issue there. I'm going to send it to, to um, let me send it to, uh, you know, the ministers that are listening to this program or they're paying attention to whenever we send a uh, thing. So somebody did ask for two, um, uh, what you call it, uh, two or three uh, uh, we call those things um, that you push people on. Uh, that's I'm just lost a word there, Leonard. Okay, one, two. Um, good. I've sent it there. I'm going to look out, look out for that. So in the meantime, let me see some other thing. Good afternoon, Gildari. I'm not getting you on YouTube. Is the YouTube on? It is a video. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the YouTube is on. I'm not sure why you're not getting the YouTube. You need to check it back. Our boys here saying that the YouTube is on. Good job, Gildari. Good day. Thank you very much. Hi, Leonard Gildari. Due to the pandemic, there's no graduation for the grade six students. Why is there not a voucher given to the top student? Why is there that the top students can't even have a trophy or medal? There's no courage given to the students. My brother topped the school. And I can see because he didn't get a certificate, trophy, or medal. He doesn't have that confidence in going forward. Is this fair? The kids tried the best, even though it was challenging. Who are we depending on for the future? These kids, they're the future. Um, uh, uh, so uh, so in, a, in a very short way, you are going to call that. Um, I'm talking to Raj here. Uh, the, so this person this is very sad. I'm not so sure what are some of the schools doing. I know that my little daughter's school, they had a little a very quick thing with handing over to the teacher a gift on behalf of the student. And I think uh, there was some kind of thing happening, but uh, they were very careful in the pandemic. You've got to be very careful. The less that you could have crowds, but I understand if there's a top student, the school is obligated to, you know, show some kind of recognition uh, for what they're doing there. And, and I agree. And if uh, this kid is indeed has done so very well, uh, my congratulations uh, to, to, to them. Yes, three wheelchairs that person have asked. Um, uh, yes, wheelchairs. My apologies. Sometimes the words go through my head and I'm thinking doing 300 things one time. Um, uh, so, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Do I have, um, am I on the ship? Hello? Uh, yes. Somebody called in. My apologies. I'm not sure. Rogers. Rats are fall asleep on the, uh, on the thing there again. Rats is a very bad boy, you know. Um, so it's a wheelchair. I'm working on the wheelchair. Miss uh, Vindia Prasad, uh, the Minister of Human Services, did indicate to Gildari that she's going to give a helping hand. I'm working on that. You guys just bear up with me a little bit, and then uh, you guys are going to, I'm going to tell you when and how. 
and we're going to deal with it. Hi, good afternoon. Why and more estate don't take on people from enterprise to work on the estates? I'm not sure what they're doing. Um, uh, you guys need to get on to um, uh, to work on the estate and more estate. They and I think enterprise is asking why they don't do that. Have there been um, any uh, process that's open for applications? Let me know how does it. You guys need to send me some messages there. Raj, do we have the, the call online there? Uh, uh, okay, in the meantime, while they're doing that, let me tell, um, uh, let me, okay. So, so uh, a better value for better protection, get your ship and cargo cover with us today. Caricom General Insurance Company, Inc. at 121 Regent and Arnock Street, to better serve you. You cannot purchase your insurance online from the comfort of your home. Telephone 225-1787 or 269-0020, uh, Caricom General Insurance Company, Inc. at the moment. So uh, by, by the time the boys uh, get the uh, ERC on the line there, uh, we are going to read you some other messages uh, for, that is coming in from our people. It's 6 triple two. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, the, I think we will not get in. I'm not sure uh, what's happening there. Hello? Okay, so in the meantime, while the boys are getting up, um, I think they're watching here the Wake Up Guyana show, and uh, I think uh, they, they, they are tuned in. Um, um, you know, it's, it's so very good, Raj, when we have so many people here. We have Raj and we have Joshua in the studio, and the boys are all fired up. They love the radio station, and, they, and they've been coming in every single day, doing what they got to do, and like clockwork, and the people are tuning in because they're seeing what they're doing. Okay, good afternoon, Leonard. I'm living in Chan San Road, uh, Chan San Road, so it's like, and we don't have electricity here also. The other road, which runs parallel, is very populated, known as Culture and San Road. For over 20 years now, we can't get no way. It's very frustrating. Only promises the election time. And uh, please let the relevant persons uh, hear you. But send that to the relevant person. Thank you very much to that person there. And somebody says, I would like to ask the NIS oh. where... I would like to ask you... I would like you to ask the NIS why they increase the minimum the payment. They don't do it on a percentage basis. But let the minimum catch up at the lower level. Also, the government is only increasing the old age pension. Why not the NIS pension? Uh, this is something that the NIS would have to say. I think they're in some predicament right there and then. They need to bring it on an even keel before for long-term viability this is going to have problems. Um, Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Leonard. How are you? I have this concern to raise. How can an NGSA child that was awarded a particular secondary school based on his mark be given permission to attend a school that higher, has a higher cutoff mark? There's many parents who are disgruntled would like to have their children attend the school of their choice but can't. Why are they always the exception? It is said that the parent has a political clout. I have, I say no further. I'm not aware of any case like this. I know that uh, if you want for, to move from a higher school to a lower school because of location and things like that, that's very thing. If you got to go from a uh, lower school to a higher school, uh, then we have issues there. Um, it has to be done. I think the ministry, I don't think a, a particular minister could, even the minister of education can do it off her own. I think there's some uh, ways that you could probably appeal and it has to be under special circumstances. So we are going to talk about that in a little while. I'm going to probably, when I ask the minister to come on board, we're going to probably ask her to, to tell us a little about that. Uh, uh, so uh, Raj, do we, do, uh, okay, I'm waiting on Raj. Let's read, read a couple of messages here. Good day, enjoying the program. Keep You're it up. Cool? The good works. Uh, so it looks as if we have some issues there with our folks. Hi. Hello again. I applied for the COVID-19 relief assistance hamper since July and nothing. And I keep calling uh, the CDC and the Social Protection, I'm not getting anything. Yes, they placed everything on a hold with regards to hampers right now until they could finish paying out everybody uh, the, the $25,000 cash that they're doing right now. They're moving slowly. I think they should move faster. Some people are saying they should move faster uh, and people are getting impatient with it. Um, uh, but they... I have spoken to Lieutenant Colonel uh, Kessler Craig of the CDC, the Civil Defense Commission, which is charged with the giving out emergency hampers and so on. And he is saying that he's awaiting word. They've placed it on a, uh, on a hold right now. 
until they could get a word from the government. They don't want to confuse it because it could very well end up into a scandal in that it's not being and then people are going to accuse the government. And even Gildari, who probably had nothing to do with it, might even get accused. I don't want to be accused. Uh, so uh, we are going to be bringing you those. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is 20. 2020, we need to come together as one. One people, one nation, one destiny. We'll make a better game. We'll have to have. To, we we'll, we have to have to do that. Do it right for the sake of the young people of tomorrow. I want to agree with that. We have some people here. Um, uh, so, Raj, we're not getting through with that. I think there's some issues there with with getting the numbers. Could we get some people calling into us right now? Two two six seven four five three. Two two six seven four five three. Send us those text messages to six triple two triple two. I think uh, I think uh, we are I think George Zimmer trying to get through. So in the meantime, some of the big news that you should know about today. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. I think we if if we cut off, he calls us because uh, we apologize for that. We're trying to get through with the uh, uh, ERC at the moment. So, so just bear with us while we get it, and we are going to come on back with you in a very short while. Um, uh, in the meantime, um, in the meantime. Calling. In the meantime, uh, let me see what is happening. Um, uh, do we have another call here? Um, let me see. Right in the no. Uh, so it's a wake up gain issue, and we tuned in from the Kaichor uh, studio here on Saffron Street. We coming to you on uh, Kaichor. Uh, uh, Kaichor 99.1 in Demerara and in Esquivel 99.5 in Burbies. You could also get us on Facebook, um, Kaichor Radio, Kaichor Radio on Facebook and Kaichor Radio live stream. Um, so we, I think we, we are ringing now. Good uh, afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Shiv Dan Lal. How are you doing, sir? Not bad, not bad at all, Leonard. How are you? I was about to accuse you of not wanting to come on the show, but you know, I, I know you're a good friend to Gildari and the Kaicho Radio and so on. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. We have some technical sure. issues there. So we have with us right now Mr. Shiv Dan Lal, and he's no other than the Public Relations Officer of the Ethnic Relations Commission. You know that the Ethnic Relations Commission has a very, very serious mandate and uh, regulatory powers when it comes to race relations, ethnic relations in Guyana. So I, I'm going to ask, I know that in a very short while, um, uh, you are going to tell us, I know there's a logo competition, which is part of the campaign, uh, Mr. Nanlal, that the ERC yeah. is using to raise the awareness of um, uh, ethnic uh, relations in Guyana, how we could improve it. Tell us a little, because there is that local competition, could you tell us a little about what's happening? Yes, thank you, Leonard, and good afternoon to the listeners. I want to zero in straight away. The Ethnic Relations Commission plans to host a national symposium on race relations soon in Guyana, and it's, we're inviting our Guyanese of, uh, of all ages to um, to, well, in this case, participate in a local competition for that um, national symposium. The local competition is uh, really geared towards persons who um, would want to participate. And the team that uh, we're, we're focusing on for that symposium is Understand, Respect, Unite, Bridging the Ethnic Divide. So. The Logan uh, competition is open to Guyanese of all ages, and um, it's, uh, the deadline submission is October the 30th, that's tomorrow. It, it's been on our Facebook page for over a week now, and um, moving into the deadline, which is tomorrow, there is some time still, but persons can submit their entries to the ERC office at uh, 66 Peter Rose and on Irish Street, uh -huh. or... Email those entries or those uh, logos to peau at erc.org.gy. Let me give that to you again. It's peau at erc.org.gy. Now, um, the symposium itself, you know, we, we know that we need to have a conversation. There, there's uh, various factors that have led to an erosion of race relations. And... Uh, those uh, factors would be examined through the working groups during the symposium. And the idea is actually coming out of that symposium, the ERC wants to submit a report to Parliament based on, that, uh, on the outcome of that um, 
symposium. Bear in mind, we, the ERC does not report to a minister. We, re, we report to the Speaker of Parliament. So we, we are not bound by any uh, directives coming from a minister as such. So this is all in keeping with um, our mandate. And this is uh, to get Guyanese, particularly civil society, the private sector, academic scholars, practitioners, policy makers, about the you know, the race relations, what has been affecting the race relations and the, um, perhaps the, what is um, preventing the socioeconomic transformation of the country. So uh, registration is free and um, the details would be, would be available soon online because this, this symposium is scheduled for the latter part of November, uh -huh. November this year. So registration and details uh, on registration will be available soon. And of course, because of the COVID-19 uh, restrictions, uh -huh. the the symposium will be uh, will be on the Zoom platform and Facebook is the live stream on those uh, those uh, uh, um, those domains. And the thing is, we will have some physical participation as well. I thank you, know, you very much for that. So, um, mm -hmm. very quickly, um, uh, Mr. Nanlal, because people yeah. on this program here, especially, have been wanting to hear about you. Because, of course, the only way we could be able to, to heal what is happening is having uh, a hearing with our authorities. And so, in this case, it Definitely. is the ERC. So, here mm -hmm. is what we're going to do. And I'm very happy that you guys have started this logo competition because uh, really? it means that you, you are very much aware of what the concerns are out there. And it is a big concern, especially with that Barbies mm -hmm. issue with the election that we have just passed and it's still continuing I think a lot of people are hurt and people don't want to go through this again and yes. we, we of course I would like to know and I think many persons would want to know how is it that, that uh, ERC is stepping up its game so here is what we're Definitely. gonna do I mm -hmm. want to thank you very much for this logo thing which gives me yes. the front door opening to to invite you and maybe the ERC chairperson and even the commissioners to come on the radio here let's have mm -hmm. a chat yeah. a power it doesn't take I mean the people want to talk they probably want to ask you about some of the rights that they have as, as residents, as citizens of this beautiful country of ours. So right. if I feel grieved that Gildari, you know, is doing something um, that uh, I have some rights or the person have some rights in which they could take some actions against right. me because I would have said something which may have some uh, racial links and so on. So uh, right. maybe I want to invite you, the, 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 the chance is thrown out and let's do it as early yes. as possible. You get back to me and let us definitely, do that. Definitely, Leonard, yes. And I thank you very much, dear. Uh, any other thing you want to add before we close this? Well, at the same time, um, persons who are who want to uh, be part of this local competition, there is a prize of fifty thousand dollars for the best entry, and um, you know this it's uh, a, a, a good mechanism to for persons. I know there are, we have a lot of talent out there to simply put uh, their creative energies together and come up with a logo. Then remember the theme understand, respect, unite, bridging the ethnic divide. That's the, that's the theme of the symposium. So persons um, wanting to um, be a part of it can remember that theme. They could, persons can follow, uh, follow us on our, on our Facebook page, Ethnic Religions Commission, for updates, right? So as, as uh, details um, become available, we'll be letting the public know about dates and venues and so on, and registration also. And the registration is free, by the way. Yes, I thank you very much there, Mr. Shiv Nandal, and he's a public thank relations you. officer of the Ethnic Relations Commission. Thank you, Mr. Nandal. Thank and you, please, Leonard. please make arrangements to bring your people on here as early as possible. The people yes, call we'll for it, that, right? No problem. We'll God bless you, that, my brother. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Okay. So it's a Shiv Nanlal there for the Ethnic Relations Commission. We had to take that break there because, of course, um, you know, they've asked us there to do that public uh, as part of our responsibility to the people of Guyana. We were obligated, you know, to do what you call public service announcements from time to time, PSAs. And uh, we have to, of course, um, uh, when these things happen, we are obligated as part. It's a part of our licensing arrangements.
so we have to do that and that was part of uh, thing it is, it is but at the end of the day uh, we are going to bring back ERC we're going to bring the commissioners we're going to bring the chairperson because ERC is the regulator ERC is the authority that they can even charge you or recommend charges against you sanction you and call you before them to testify if they find that you are doing anything racial whether it's on Facebook whether it's spoken word whether it's a video whatever it is they have a very important role so I want to say thank you very much today for being with us it's a wake up gay show I'm your host Leonard Gildari and it's two two six seven four five three it's a people's business now let's get back into it we have about 45 uh, about 40 45 minutes and we want to get as much calls in as possible good afternoon caller you on the air Hello? Yes, sir. Go right there. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildari. How are you? Pretty good, sir. Good. Glad to hear that. I'm listening to your program, but I I joined a little late because I had to go this morning. Yes. This is um, Councillor McHugo. Yes, sir. And I would like, since um, I'm telling you that I joined you late, I don't want it to happen again that I'm late where you might have had um, Mr. GRA or the Ministry of Finance. No, we didn't talk anything with GRE and finance this morning. It was more about law and yeah, feeling no, a couple of people. I understand. I, d I didn't know what the program was. I heard Mr. Nanlal on the radio just now. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't home to listen to the whole program. What I'm saying, just so that I don't miss if they were to come on the program, I would like to leave a contact information for you to give me a heads up when it's going to happen so that I could be home and um, have my contribution made to them. No problem, no problem. I'm going to work on it um, as soon as I get my head right. I, I seem to be all over the place right now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, you're going to call the, the switch board this afternoon and I'm going to give I you... I could leave it with you now. It's very simple. All right, good. It's 600 uh -huh. 6746 And if you forget it, Mr. Gildari, uh -huh. it is 600 O R I N. You can't forget <laughs> my name. Yeah, you know... The, just press with the O, the R, the I, and the N is. Thank you very much, sir. I, I just need a heads up because I don't want to miss out on them being on the program, and I'm not home. Oh, gosh. This, this, this might sound like abuse out there, but let me no, go. No, it's not <laughs> It is all right. It, it's that I need to have my ID. No, no, of course. Know. Of course. As yes. citizens of this country, we have that right. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Bye-bye. So at the end of the day, um, it is uh, we must know our rights, and this is uh, this program here, the Wake Up Guyana Show, is designed to empower you for you, for you to understand that you have a lot of powers. So it's two two six seven four five three, and you have those messages to send to six triple two triple two. We want to read to people what are some of your concerns, what is it that you're thinking about your government, well, how is it that uh, you want this country to move forward? Uh, do you believe that the government is lapsing in some way? Do you believe a couple of uh, authorities are not doing what they're supposed to be doing what is happening in your uh, village in your community we want to know this is what the wake up again show is on kaicho radio do we have another call today raj yes good afternoon caller you're on the line go right ahead hi good afternoon Leonard, and how are you pretty good ma'am go right ahead um here's what i heard um the minister announcing protocol for the airport that will be fully opening but i did not hear they say anything about infants under one year if they have to do the pcr test I could barely hear you. Could you speak up a little? Do you have a speaker or something? Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, I was saying that I heard the minister announcing protocols for PCR testing. Right. But they didn't say anything about infants under one year if they have to do any tests. And they didn't say if we can access these tests at a public facility or we have to do it private in order to have our tests done. Yeah, I think if the test, whichever way, a PCR test, whether you do it privately or publicly, is one result you got to get. So you could do it public or private as long as there's a test result here. Yeah, but my question is, they didn't say anything about infants, so I was wondering... Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, that's a very good question, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure uh, in in cases like this um, how to treat infants because I did the, the the PCR the COVID test and it's something that you insert up your nose and um, it wasn't yes. a very so it's not that it's very a little bit more clear on that part because you don't want to go to the airport just with an adult test and then they're saying that you can't go because the child. I'm going to get some clarity on that. I'm going to get some clarity on that. that part because yes. you know it's very critical for the baby to go as well. We understand. Got you very, very clear, very okay. clear. Thank I'm going to find it. Thank you very thank much, you, there, thank ma'am. Goodbye-bye.
So I want to say good day before we go back to those messages very, very quickly. A good day to all uh, everybody who's on with us from overseas and locally here, especially on Facebook and so on. You are also locked into us here on YouTube. Uh, Rita Jagmohan, uh, Sheikh Abraham, and we have Kamala Singh all the way from uh, Brampton, Ontario. Good day to you, Pam Singh. Jai Pasad, um, I'm just calling these names. If I miss you guys, forgive me. Banwati Jean Ram, um, and we also have Tara Jagdi or Atm Bakas as always. Uh, Savi Not, uh, Data Nandal, Nandal, sorry. Uh, Blackie Singh, a good day to my friend Blackie Singh. How are you doing? Alistair Jeremiah and Barkley Tara Jagdi. Well, I did say that. The RM uh, Singh Singh, um, some Wayne Pasad here. Uh, Joyce Sitch. Salomon Smith, uh, Latchman Samlal. I think uh, I think that's about it. As uh, as much as I can go, very very quickly. And uh, um, good afternoon, bro. Education is a big demand still, and poor people need help from government uh, to help the kids get better education. I can tell you that every week I have to put three thousand dollar data for my three kids uh, for uh, for school work. That's unfair to poor people. The other thing is the hamper application just pop up on the CDC page. And what happened to the people who doesn't have internet? Um, yes, you're right. And so when I learned about these things, I remember we just learning however I could get them and when these information come up. But they put a halt on the CDC, the sharing out of the hampers. You could probably apply, but they put a halt on any sharing out at the moment until they could get this cash out of the way, this cash vouchers or so. I rather suspect that they're going to use the same set of people to do the sharing out of the hampers so maybe they don't have enough personnel you don't put any enough person to share all these things these people got to be professionals they got to know they got to have uh, ideas of logistics and so on so let us uh, get some ideas as to that i have a complaint sir there's a uh, people in the tushan north there's a east bank escape but that's old road corner i would say that they're very dirty people they're not using the bin to put the garbage they put in the garbage on the road it's very nasty to look at it's smelly and they have to put fire in the garbage you know you guys got to be a little more uh, uh, cleaner than that if this is indeed true uh, we dirty set of people man uh, that you're dumping garbage all over the place you got to put it in such a way put it in a bag or something and there's garbage to be picked do not just walk across the street and you know i see a lady some videos of a lady just coming out of her house walking in a very royal manner to the garbage heap that is opposite her home and people are very upset That's with that uh, so uh, good day to uh, WRE as in the studio here G Passard from Brooklyn is saying hello to the folks here hi I'm currently in Canada I was wondering if there's a COVID test to travel to Guyana you have to take the COVID test over there um, uh, wherever you are take it and it uh, takes it I think within 72 is it 72 hours 72 hours I'm going to ask um, uh, Riaz in a very short while to tell us about some of the requirements what happens a lady was asking in a very short short while uh, uh, yes uh, a baby so. yeah good day good day I was on my way I was just parking when that call uh, was coming through uh, I was made to understand I was made to understand once they're three years old um, I was actually was about to make a call to someone at Ministry of Health before coming upstairs just to verify that. However, that person number ring till it rang out. The last I heard, but I just want 100% confirmation. And before the end of the day, I'll give, give you the same information as well, uh, Leonard. So maybe you'll share it out tomorrow. Um, I, did, I did understand it was like about between, between three to five, but I just will accurately 100% um, confirm that before the end of the day so tomorrow we could share to that listen as it is thank you very much the wr riaz you had a good weekend yeah it was Rats bad. cook biryani yesterday something he said something biryani was mumbling something i don't know whether he still had a biryani he had, it or something he had sure biryani probably was eating biryani probably maybe uh, and that was good um there's a very strange fellow you know he comes in he cooks biryani and then says i cook biryani you got to force it out of him and then he doesn't bring any for anybody so there's some issues going on with so this issues. um uh. the weekend wasn't a bad weekend um we did have an accident we did have a fatality um, does a, yeah the, and there was somebody fell on a diamond here and yeah. then that lady that died, died a of, few yeah. uh, about an hour ago that caused a chaotic traffic jam at east bank just by that's what Providence, just by the Rubis gas station. Um, the Eastern Lane, two trucks made a little kiss up. Mm. Um, nothing too serious, but it caused traffic build up for a good period of time. Currently, the Demerara Harbor Bridge is closed to vehicular traffic, so I need not to tell you what may 
happen a little bit later on the east bank so expect some traffic there um apart from that uh, we've seen uh, I, I i think i think this was the the most active weekend for ministers mm -hmm. have you been following I, I think this is the most active weekend when i say the most active is that i've seen quite a number of ministers including um his excellency uh, President Ali moving from S from from Burbies uh, to East Coast uh, to to Sophia next day straight. I'm a little happy. Let me tell you why I'm happy. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm Riaz, I'm very happy. I would like to see um, uh, parliamentarians. And yes. this I mean that mean me Yal is not friend. I mean, me, I, I'm friends with Ali Yal. But I like to see some parliamentarians turning up in dark circles on the allies in Parliament in the chambers. And Irfan, Mohammed Irfan Ali is president. He get them busy, mm -hmm. get them busy, get them walking. And I think maybe this is a good thing. I think there's this an this air. There's yeah. an air in this country now that, that um, is really. And this is not because I'm. Uh, this, this is not anything political. This is a fact. There's an air in this country that people are very confident the now. Fact, the fact it's all the, over the place. The fact of it is that uh, why are we continuously talking about this? And I want everyone to understand. It is we have not seen. It's either two things. It's either two things. And I'm subject for correction on this. Please correct me. Anyone. It's either Facebook wasn't showing me the feed when the previous government was touring or I didn't see it. That's all. Mm -hmm. But it seems that I'm seeing so much is happening. No, they're all over the place. This is what I'm saying. Uh, Correct me, anyone, because this is not a political statement. I don't want someone to, you know, think of it like, but facts need to be given. Ministers, MPs. Now, every single day, MP Faisal Jafar Ali from Region 5, Burbis, has been, has been impressing me because every two, three hours, uh -huh. the man is in a different community doing work and engaging people and when i see these things i have to you know call it out i saw minister of labor going back up um to interview for another training session again you know th th this is this is no, good yeah, it that is, it people is, it are is. being engaged you it's see, like if people are being engaged uh -huh. which is a good for for community i know some persons may say well they didn't get to my community the hampers didn't deliver to my community uh, it's a task but good to know that they're listening to people and every day, the, the Attorney General gets a spot that he goes every day. Mon Saturday, rain, sun, or, 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 or dark, or no light, he sits there from 10 uh, to about 12. And I'm sure it's going to be over 12 um, in Monrepo. I saw this week he was joined by uh, Minister of um, Minister Nigel Darmlal uh, with him. So these guys I think you, really you, you know, there's, and that's a very good thing. When, when you have uh, politicians, and, and this is on a very, very serious note now. I have, I've always said here, I've sat in this program here, and I, mm -hmm. as, as the days go by, I became very uh, vocal, and um, I became less fearful of what this mic could do and what this has been doing. Um, but I've always said that the politicians got to start understanding very, very quickly that they're there to serve the people. Yep. And it's not only politicians, I'm talking about the NDC officials, all the councillors and everybody, even the mayors and everybody, even the public servants. That's why you need public servants, servant service. Service, exactly. So you got to have an understanding very clearly that when you go in there, this thing is not about money anymore. It's about service to the people. So you're dedicated, even your family life that you, you have to understand when you enter this business here, that you put your family life at second, because it is to the people you've sworn an oath to uphold, to serve. That is what it is. So when I see things like this, that, you know, we actually, I hope, I'm not sure how long they can continue this momentum. Whatever it is, I like what I'm seeing. And I, I like the fact that the president has them busy. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, apart from that, uh, it's uh, been uh, a, a quiet weekend. We've, we've seen more cases for COVID. We've seen more, we've seen the ministers are being educating the nation a little bit more um kudos uh, kudos to them but i think you know we've been doing this to the nation since march before uh, before altogether. yeah <laughs> before we you go know? read some other things that uh, you you are going to see a barack, barack obama situation here when barack obama went in there nice looking guy you see when he came out all gray here all <laughs> over the place and, the and then we i and think then, it's up smoking too yeah <laughs> and, and then we had we had um we had a facebook um 
scenario last night on, 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 on social media as well. And Gildari name was calling in this face. No, I took a picture. Let me tell Gildari you. Gildari name was calling <laughs> in this in this in this dramatic in this dramatic unfold on, 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 on social media. Yeah, yeah. The, I took a picture of Critic in here and I said, well, whenever Critic and Gildari meet up, it's going to be big war, something like that. And so the kids, <laughs> we have some very wicked staffers here. So uh-huh. the, the, the reporters them says, we're going to send them up. Mm-hmm. So it says, Critic is the editing chief yeah. and, and, and he's well loved as he's well uh, criticized as well. So they, they went after him and said, Kaichu News has gone to the dogs. And I'm saying, but Critic, <laughs> I mean, but you, I'm not sure what it takes to be an editor. Look, if you have some street sense, Aye. you can become a very good editor. You don't have to edit. You could get somebody probably to proofread those stories. But a good manager, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you this I barely finished high school. I didn't do any degrees. I didn't go anywhere. I couldn't afford it. I had to start working. And I, I would say I don't know a lot. But I write a column. I'm not sure whether any people, any persons read it. I um, want to think they I read edit it. Sometimes. They, they read it. They read it. <laughs> but they, 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 no, no. <laughs> at the end of the day, look, look. At the end of the day, I think I think common sense is a very important thing. But let's go very quickly back into those messages, and then we go back to those calls. Uh, it's says about, about about 25 minutes or so. They about to have. Hi, Leonard. Good afternoon. I'm living in the Commons Lodge area. We have lots of drainage. Probably went to Freedom House and talk to somebody and they say somebody will come but they never it's about six weeks now you got to find out who is it that you talk about uh, talk to and uh, um and uh, try to get back to them i'm not sure what about the ndc have you spoken to the ndc or to the city council i think the city council has some jurisdiction there or does that fall under the region four is there an ndc there you need to tell us thank you mr gilda i appreciate your help on the issue about the children on the two years uh, if they have to go do the PCI test before traveling, I'd be looking forward to get the confirmation once we ask, get the confirmation. Yeah, I'll, I'm working as soon as I can. Thank I, you very much, Zia. So please verify the COVID-19 requirements again. You must see a difference because the media is fully involved. Everybody is now on social media and not playing anymore. Thank you very much, dear sir, uh, madam. Uh, so there's a call online there, uh, Raj. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You on the air? Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? All right. All right. Tell me. Are you? Yeah, man. We trying here. We trying this okay, Monday. It's, it's a it's a yeah, good thing. I got a problem here, man. Yes. In fouls. And where? Right? Fouls. 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 Yes. Fouls. Yes. Right. Now, this week makes five weeks, and this garbage people can't come and pick up this garbage as yet. Right? Who is the garbage people? Is it the garbage yeah, people? Is the NDC? NDC. And fouls, do, fouls, have they right? have they hired somebody the else, and, or they they do it themselves? Box and trying to tell you that not only here they gotta come pick up, but Leonard, this is five weeks now. What must we do with the we pay the rates and tax? We are pensioners, we can't go into poor and service and pay five for to when we come. That's ridiculous. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm sure about. When, when you they call them the Ministry of Communities. When you call them what they said? The garbage. You know, they're not picking up the garbage. What they, they said? Did you try to, to reach out to them? Yeah, we call him then we call him to box and box and tell him that I, this is not the only way, they, not the only post, not the only place they got to go here. Well, if you're coming to pick up the thing, if you're coming to pick up the thing, so, I mean, uh, whether you come today or tomorrow, you have to come pick it up. Yeah, exactly. So that doesn't answer your question. Five weeks now. I don't understand that at all. You need five to, weeks. You need to get on to um, the local government I get, on to, I get on to community since last week. I would have they said. take down my name, take down my number, and never give me a call. I call him just now, less than half an hour ago, right? And this is a this is the box and NDC you said box and fouls NDC. Yes, there's a fouls box and um, NDC. Um, there's a gentleman there. I think um, um, I'm going to give you. He's a chairperson there. Let me see if I get his name right away. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I can't put my hands on it, but he was okay. a former chairman at the NDC there. If you could get him. Uh, I can't remember what his name is, okay. but if you could get him there, I think he's a good man to get hold of. Yes. Let me make one more check. Well, don't don't okay. go away yet. One more check. I got another point here, Leonard. Yes, sir. I see there a group of people coming in, in the communities. One set of black people, right? And you know, we've got the flags and the post and the drums and everything. They come in with one set, they're taking off everything off the post and everything, all the drums and everything, you know. Well, we nail up the drum and everything for during the party. Yeah. Thing. Uh-huh. They're taking this off. When I talk to the chap now, I tell him, man, who gave you authority? The man cost me, the black chap. 
Did you report to the police? Uh, yeah, but, but uh, let no, me care for this thing. But I, I didn't report him at the time. You got to, don't, don't allow it to, to happen right, like that. Uh, I, um, I asked him who gave you all authority to take out the thing. But I don't care, you're cool, son, so. All right, let me, let me stop the right here. I don't want to tolerate too much of this thing. I we got to complain to the police and okay. to the ERC and things like that. But in any case, call it NDC former chairman here, 664-1781. 1781. 664-1781. Okay, then. Thank Call him and tell him that you spoke to me, right? Okay, good. Thank you very much, dear. And it really aches me that we got to be in this very, de decisive, this very divisive mode at the moment. When you hear things like that, how does it affect you, Riaz? It, it, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very distaste uh, statement, and, and this is coming from... No, but the man is hurting, but, I, but yeah. it, it, is, it is an issue yeah, that we have. It's an issue that we have, and it's an ongoing issue that uh, we all play a role to eradicate. And I think it could only start from us. And when I say us, I mean an individual. It starts from you, your own self, and could be able to transcend to others. It, it's, it's, it's very worrying because why I'm worried, it's like, you know what I say, you know what? Uh, it's okay. I've already built in the system. I'll manage the, 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 the system, but I'm worried for the next generation as it is. And I'm worried that the next generation will be stained before they even realize mm. that, that, that they've reached that age of where hate has been instilled in their minds. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the bad thing about it. Yes, they, they, everyone always wants to, to, to be like the taboo thing, like, you know, we shouldn't talk race, so we shouldn't talk, or people ain't gonna like when you're no, saying you have these to things. Deal with it. I, but I, I, it's I, something that yeah. we have to deal with. We can't stop putting it on the, um, the covers and sweeping it under the, the mats day by day. We wouldn't get anywhere. You see Trinidad, whether they like it or not, Trinidad got a serious problem, you know. Oh, Trinidad have a serious, serious racial serious problem. problem, a and serious you have to race deal, game. Have to, I, I right? don't know how they, and the thing is, it's evolving to gangs and things see, like that. Trinidad is, 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 is so extreme that uh, I am happy to say that we have not seen evidence for, for seen to these Islamic terrorist groups. No, I mean, Trinidad, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's dear. It's, and those, these are things kind of thing that we here. condemn. These are things that, you know, I would not ever promote. Uh, anywhere, there, there are two things that that, that, that that someone may not be able to take take away from me. Where are you from? I'm from Guyana. What's your religion? I'm a Muslim. It, that doesn't change. That's two things that will not change about me. But go to Trinidad, it's like, it's a, it's a whole different ball game um, with them. And, 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 and your setup, which is which is worrying. We have to grapple with this thing. We have to deal with it as, as early as we can. And I agree with you there, Arias. Uh, the, 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 in that situation, we have to be very guarded. We have to be very guarded in the way that we do things. Hi, Leonard. Good afternoon. It's sad to see how low and dirty our politicians can be. I'm talking about Cheryl Duncan and his post on Facebook. I have observed that the NDC also... Uh, the west side is doing a wonderful job of cleaning the the four foot but on the other hand the gpa contract is cleaning the power lines in doing so he's cutting down the trees and leaving it in the four foot that the ndc recently cleaned and uh, this is the problem that i have you have gpl working gtnt working um, uh, gwi working i went to break up the road like G gwi came in fix a pipe a leak i can remember telling gwi to come fix a leak because the water was gushing out through the road mm -hmm. they come broke up the road and left right. all the dirt, half of the road broken up. And did nobody, and I mean, I don't understand, like nobody is, if you come in and broke up the road, so if the GWI does not tell the NDC or GWI does not tell public infrastructure or public works, who, how are they gonna know? So exactly. the same thing, and the left hand is not knowing what the right hand is doing. Yeah, it seems, so you know, we, we, we need to be very, very careful about this. Um, seems that we are together. So, um, uh, this is what somebody is saying. Let me see what they're saying here. Um, Okay, and this is exactly, if we don't come together, we allow our outside people to come and divide us more. Thank you very much for that. We understand that. Um, the people are taking on this. Okay, okay. All right, let me see. Can you let us know how much for the PCR test at the airport? And yeah, they do the PCR test at the airport. Yeah, they were still to streamline it uh -huh. according to the release. Uh, they will get that info out, I'm assuming, be by time today, but I know that there are a couple of things uh -huh. that has been, there are a couple of things that are being streamlining, yeah. Right. I, I think this is very good news, but the control, I'm a little worried about the control, because if you see, we've gone, the numbers we, are ticking. We are, we are, this we, is we 22, are to be, it's 22 deaths within uh, 13 we, days. 
you know, we, we, we ought to be worried about, about it. But, you know, you have to start some, somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere in the sense that, all right, for, for an example, if we want to go to Canada today, we cannot just jump on a plane and get into Canada. We may be fortunate to get into Miami or, 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 the, or New York, but we cannot get in to, to Canada right now. We need to make an application. An application need to be vetted. You need to, 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 to explain proper reasoning going to Canada. This is a non-resident or, or a citizen, right? Um, then they will verify your information, then get back to you on the airlines. Mm -hmm. That's Canada right now, right? A few a few weeks ago, you could have gone into Canada if you were if they had a few flights that was leaving Guyana. It's not happening like that right now. You could get in to go to Miami, yes. Mm -hmm. You could get in to go to, to to New York, but mind you, you still will have to do. Um, you still will have to follow those countries' guidelines or those cities or state guidelines altogether. Um, most of what we're paying attention to and release uh, from the Honorable Minister is what's coming into Ghana because that's our main, our right, main right. concern uh -huh. right now. Well, let's see what happens here. Uh, I think Alistair Jeremiah's complaint about not being on YouTube. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, let's see what happens. Good afternoon, Mr. Leonard. I'm living in Covent Garden. New scheme. Is there anyone who could fix our road? There's no street you could drive in. It have big holes damaged your car that I have to drive through. And there's a man that's rearing cow. You can't even leave your yard. It damage up your land. The, the drain is clogged. The land get flood when rain fall. I've been living there for three years and nobody's doing anything to the scheme. I can tell you that it is. I think I I'm aware that many Minister Susan Rodriguez would have gone into the Prospect area, that same area there that's right, right next to Covent Garden there, a couple of days back after a resident complaint. I'm going to find out if it's the same. She did announce some um, emergency works for that area there, some roads and so on. Not sure if it's going to be done in a very, very uh, uh, rapid manner, but uh, we, we did tell her and she would have gone into that area. Was Covent Garden part of it? I can't remember. I can't tell you that. Thank you. If an employer has been tested by a private company, what is it that the uh, employer, I'm not sure, um, somebody is saying, if an employee has been tested with a private company, what is it that the employer is required to do? COVID positive. Um, are, private or public, if you're positive, then you have to go to quarantine. Right, right, right. I think whether it's whether it's whether it's private or public, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that, um, of, of the matter on that. Right, right. Well, let's see what happened. Do we have another call there on the line? Yes, yeah, so good afternoon, Hello. caller. You're in the yeah. air. Go right ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, my apologies. We caught you off not too long ago. Now we were I trying know, to get I, you. Know, I know, I know what we were trying to do. I didn't realize what was going on. Yes, thank um, you very much. Be, uh, to make a few points, I'll begin by making a comment about Mr. Critic's post. Uh -huh. And I'm sad to see that we are uninformed or we don't check our facts in Guyana. The amount of comments came on that post so negative. <laughs> it tells you what's going on in this country. They don't read. Things, People don't read. Them, one of the things I'm looking at is that we don't check anything anybody say we don't read. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. Looking at um, the points I would like to make, one of them is you. Joshua Van Slykman will be hired as Skycher News Editor-in-Chief yeah. sometime. That's good. One of the things I'm looking My at... My keyword was is, sometime. Yeah, I uh, know, but... Um, the UG situation, uh -huh. when COVID-19 started, uh -huh. they decided to do some online classes and they asked students if they want to drop some classes through this, this term here uh -huh. because they can't do all online. Nothing wrong with that, I understood that. I'm saying this because I help a few students with their studies. I don't know much, but I help them. And the problem is they drop some classes and some of them are on scholarships. And you can't get your grade point average as where it's supposed to be if you drop classes. And yet they're being called and asked how come the grade point average is not up. There was, they don't, these people know what's going on. And somebody in minister needs to look into this. Secondly, given the fact of these people are high profile people, I believe that the police need to give some statements. Simple, a simple thing put up on Facebook saying Mr. Critic is the editor in chief. People run with it wild. Uh -huh. you, need to, you need to talk to the people and say, we have information why we send it for Valley Lawrence and everything. Don't let other people fuel it and say it's a race thing, it's a hunt. Give a, let the public relations officers from time to time speak. To no, but I don't understand. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to, to, to see what I could think. I mean, the police are doing the investigation. I call Riaz to come to the police station 
I have to issue a statement to say that uh, I'm calling Riaz to come to the station. It's not Riaz you're calling to the station. This is the head for the PNC you're calling to the station. This is uh -huh. the chief. This is it's public figures. And then there are people who are fueling this situation. Right, 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 right. And saying it's sort of the police in it, and they don't have to give out much information. But the public relations officer, I think it's Mr. Junior, should give a statement instead of allowing people to run it. If you see what's going on on Facebook with it. And people are turning this thing upside down. I do not know what is the reason they're being called in. I know there were some things went wrong in the elections. I don't know who did what and who didn't do what. Uh -huh. But somebody needs to clear it up properly so at least... Guyanese seems to be so foolish right now. Sorry, I'm one of the Guyanese and I'm telling you, we, we seem to be foolish. Mr. Critter gets our editor-in-chief and if you hear things, sorry to stop the fact. <laughs> uh, that's how foolish we are as a nation. So before hmm. these things get fewer, we need to look at that. Finally, I do not know what will happen tomorrow, but I can say, based on, I didn't vote for the PPP, based on, and I can say this without people thinking I'm a PPP, they have been doing a better job than they ever did before. They're working every day, and we kudos to that. And the small parties that people are talking about, if I support Mr. Riaz on a comment, it doesn't mean we spread and I like you. I agree because he was right. And if the small parties are supporting certain things because it's right, what's wrong with that? Because you're small, you got to shut him out and say it's wrong. Man, and, and you're so right on that. Yeah. I, think I, the, I, I like that. The thing I is... Let's three comments off here, brothers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. The thing is, right, about... I've heard... I've heard so much about the small parties. We've called for inclusiveness. We've called for shared governance, maybe an extreme word, or let's say shared governance and, and, and exclusiveness, inclusiveness. So if you now reach out to the small parties and give them positions in various portfolios, like let's say chairman of this company or a board, or advisor um we were all calling for that and so now you criticize me for accepting the post i kind of find it a bit strange and why i go that land we've heard the opposition leader calling for talks with the president which i welcome i may not like what happened five months ago yeah, they know no doubt about that. Follow my social media. Mm. I'll tell you, red is red, green is green, black is black, white is white. I ain't gonna tell you, well, man, the red look a little light, red or pale green. My point is, I'll call a spade a spade. So when you did wrong, you did wrong. Don't come and tell me two and two is 22 and two plus two is four. Point as it is, you ask for inclusiveness. So the small parties were calling on that. So some of them were given, I wish I know of this publicly, were given position on various boards or advisors and these things like that. You'd call for that. But the opposition said that they're not recognizing the government. Mm. And now you call for working together. Your first step is to recognize the government before we could work and have a relationship. It's like if Leonard said, well, hey, don't come and share different views on this program then why am I coming on the program for at the end of the day? Right, right, right. I share my views. I'm not breaking protocols as to station policies or whatever it is, but you can't want to be at one level, belittle me, and then it's like if I go on out to the here and tell him, hey, by Leonard talking nonsense, so I'll don't listen to the man. Mm -hmm. And then about 2.20, I can come on and have a conversation with you. It is, it is. Uh, you know, so that's where I see the opposition to the government. So you bar talk the government, but then you say, man, let we talk. No, mm. it's not going to work like that. Thank you very much for that. So the Wake Up Guyana show here, I'm your host, Leonard Gildari, and we're joined in the studio here with W.I. Riaz. We have Raj at the studio. Raj, I've been working with you so long, I don't even know your last name. But what's your last name? What's your last name? What, what's the name? Achari. Achari. He's Raj Achari. I, it's like Achar, you know, like Achar? Achari. I, I, I hope I'm doing you justice there, man. And he says yes. Uh, so it is the Wake Up Gayani Show. We are going to have some uh, other callers in the moment. But let me tell you this. We have uh, persons tuned in to this Wake Up Gayani Show here all the way from Brazil. I want to say a uh, good day to Sharon Aziz uh, de Souza. We have folks down in Norway, Canada, um, right across the U.S. We have New Jersey and so on. I want to say all welcome to the Wake Up Gianni show here on Kaicho Radio. 
and wherever you're joining us from, I want to say thank you very much. And I want to say if you're ailing today, you know, get up, do something. I hope that you feel better. If it's your birthday, I want to say happy birthday. It's, I think it's the mayor's birthday. You brought right today. A good day to you, sir. And I hope that you have a very splendid day. And so wherever you are, Mr. Glenn Lal, how are you doing, sir? I haven't seen you for a little while. It's been a couple hours, I think, I did see good you yesterday. Good afternoon to the editor-in-chief. And good sure. afternoon to the so-called editor-in-chief. He's not the editor-in-chief. They think they're making <laughs> jokes. It was satire all the way. They said, uh, according to the Facebook According quote, to them, I say yeah. on Facebook. Yes, and they said, we have some good sources. This is a, a, a staff was saying this of Kaito News. We have it from good sources. These boys are wicked. These girls are wicked. You know. We have it from good sources that the critic who believes that he, he could give the unvarnished truth um, is the new editor in chief, and he's going to be the boss of Gildari. So everybody bought this thing. Like, like I, I had good fun this morning. People call, you know, so I had some calls, some, some ministry people. I said, Is it true? I said, I mean, what are you talking about? Oh, oh that. I said, You guys got to read, man. You guys got to understand what is the truth. Um, but it's a good lap for the day. So there's another call online. Good afternoon, caller. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Yes, good afternoon, caller. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. How are you? And good afternoon to Mr. Riyadh. Good, good afternoon. afternoon to you. We're good. good We're good. Okay, I'm a senior citizen. Yes. And I thought um, that these squibs was was banded. Oh? You know, the Squid. squibs. The uh, squibs yes, yes, yes. With the bombs. Now these youths come at whole day and then in the evening, a whole set of them riding and throwing it in, 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 in your yard. You can't sleep. Where is that? Which uh -huh. area is that? Huh? Which area is that? La Penitence. Oh, my. Penitence. And when you call the, 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 the police station, they say, yes, yes, we we, we, we going to send the arm. Um, the, 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 the police on patrol. And I saw the police saw them pass through, pass by my gate, and then say nothing. I, I, I wanted the, 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 the uh, minister of security to, to, to ban this thing, you know, if they want to do it, do it very far. This thing going off like if it's a gun, you're jumping out your bed. It's COVID. This is not sport time. And another thing, sir. Uh -huh is that they don't have masks, it's a whole crowd of them. Yeah, you? madness. You know, even when you lock up one o'clock, you boom, boom, you want to know if it's gone far enough. I need an ethic relation uh, um, officer ethic, that, right. that, that was on, on, on your program just now. I listen. I need him to, 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 to investigate this matter as, as well I'm as... I'm not the, sure. Uh, There's a police matter. I'm not sure whether... The, are, are they targeting you because you believe that or it's something else? Huh? Are they targeting you there because of that? That's a police matter. No, they're just going everywhere uh -huh. out and, and, and doing it. That's madness. Um, uh, and it's some, every, uh, every, every day, sometimes from morning till night. You got a lot of money to be firing up scripts. You got this money, this pull that, this like um, lighting, uh, know, lighting money fire. Wow. Yeah, this, thing. this thing need, it needs to be banned. I, I know um, when the PPP was in government before now, they had banned it. Yeah. The, pol but the it police are like still. I heard my dad is very vocal on this point. The police. Uh, are guilty of selective enforcement and he's been of course very of course of course very very vocal on that and and i you know that's that's the sad thing about it yeah, i i i, I uh, you know i'm concerned about the citizen that is calling with us right now the that's police an interesting need one. to come out and, and and stop these youths you know this is not call the nice. commander call the commander at the breakdown police station i don't have his number right now if you get a blue page it doesn't with a book the telephone directory you check on the Ministry of Home Affairs and call the commander and make a complaint so that you talk to Kaicho Radio. Yeah, because they could burn on your property. Absolutely, dear. So thank you very much, senior citizen. Thank you sound you. very young, I must tell you that. <laughs> thank you, sir. Have a blessed day, both you of too. you. You too. Take thank care. you very much. And Bye -bye. there is a viewer listener here all the way from Suriname, our next door neighbor to the east there. And I'm going to try to pronounce this. So if I sound like a cuss word, uh, forgive me. I, I, I don't... Uh, speak that Dutch uh, very well. Jim Udik in Sprit. Okay, I'm, I stopped right there. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> some kind of funny. It sounds German as well as things. So, Jim, thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us there from Suriname, and let, I hope that you get another Let me, let me call on, on this one. Alice, let me say this as it is before I go this. 
If you see Leonard, he is about three, four feet away from me. Uh-huh. That's why he doesn't have a mask on and I'm there. Uh-huh. Whilst I'm doing the program again, my select is way behind me. The two of us are in the studio. My point behind all of this, I also see Mr. Hussein, my dad, saying that the vendors at Fogarty's pavement wearing the mask, wearing mask the correct way. When none of the vendors on Fogarty's pavement are wearing the mask the correct way. We have to, especially when you're in public. When I, when I leave and I go to public, I will be wearing it. I go out in public, I will. Um, we have to do this because we've seen the numbers rise. We want to have a bright Christmas or we want to have a COVID, less COVID free. It's not going away for Christmas. Let me don't hide our... No, 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 we had it into a half year more. And so Let us, but if you want to have a slightly more balanced Christmas, this is the time that we have to do it. So oh. Guyanese, play your part. Wear that mask correctly. Thank you very much, dear W.R. Riaz. I want to say good day to Mr. Nazim S. Hussein. I think that's a dad. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. is as young as Riaz. I've always seen him growing yeah, up as a little boy, right. looking at television there, a very um, popular television personality. has been around for a very long time, very, um, uh, very experienced there. Good day to you, Mr. Nazim. And I think it's been a little while since we talk. And, and you know, uh, we're here at uh, WR Riaz, and we've decided to tag team against Raj on a daily basis. But he is a very tough Raj with his lawyer. biryani rice yesterday. Yes, too. yes, Remember and he cooked that. So we're we holding it against him. So thank you very much, dear. This has been a wrap. As usual, uh, we have been discussing a couple of things. And uh, if you missed it, it is that there are more charges against Keith Lowenfield of the Ghana's Elections Commission. He was told to turn up today. Tomorrow is where the PNC is our chairperson and former minister of health Paula Lawrence is supposed to be turning up at the CID headquarters. Wasn't she supposed to be turning up at 10 today? Yes, yeah. but it's said tomorrow. tomorrow. Today, Kate okay. Lowenfield turned okay. up. I think they would have taken him across to the courts there. More charges for him. So um, uh, this thing is getting serious. I'm not sure it's heating up there. Many persons who are believing that nothing was done, the police are doing a, a criminal investigation. And so let us see what happened. Was there fraud? Uh, these are fraud issues. Um, and of course, it goes beyond that. Uh, public office, uh, mm-hmm. misbehaving in public mm-hmm. office. And so uh, in other countries, what would those charges have been? So maybe sometime or the other, we are going to talk about that. But let's come down to program time here. It is the Wake Up Gian show. We would have been coming to you live on 99.1 and 99.5 up in Burbies if you want to get us. And of course, on Kaicho Radio Facebook or Kaicho Radio live stream here on YouTube. I understand some persons were getting some issues with YouTube. I think, um, I'm not sure why you were getting that, but uh, we seem to be all right here. Uh, so uh, take care, folks. I want you to remain safe. We love you a lot, wherever you've been joining us from. We don't want to see anything happen to you because you're part of the Guyanese family. We all Guyanese, we're very proud of this country. Uh, we're very harsh on our government and the other opposition and whoever else it is that's going to be there because we demand much more. We want a better Guyana. And there's nothing wrong with us demanding. There's nothing wrong with us asking. There's nothing wrong with us quarreling to make sure that our people deliver and deliver in a very strong way, in a very um, uh, decisive way whatever people have been demanding. So thank you very much. Have a pleasant rest of the day. We are going to be back tomorrow. Again, like I said before, I really got to love you people. I love everybody in the studio here. I'm on vacation. Vacation, but I can't, walk away. I can't, I can't stay away. I just said if you stay away, that means they would have to put the program down for a couple of days. And I'm not sure. For the last week, I think I'd have to do that. I've been doing my medical te- che- checks and so I'm going to update you about what has happened in there. But the eyes are getting weaker and weaker, and then eventually I'm going to um, uh, have to do something really serious about it. If it is that I do that, I'd have to be off a couple of months. I'd have to block off the eyes. It's an actual operation with the retina of the eyes. It's getting really weak. Um, so thank you very much uh, to you folks, uh, wherever you are. Have a pleasant rest of the day. Stay safe. If you're in mourning, if you're celebrating your birthday, be strong. Uh, be safe. I can't say it enough. Uh, and a good day to our president and the opposition leader and the rest of their teams. Until then. <laughs>